Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Roger Testrudi. And as you know, every month we strive to bring a, a new guest to talk about some of the important roles of county government. And today you're going to see a new face. We have a new HR Director, Human Resources Director for Sheboygan County, Ms. Jean Gallimore. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Nice Jean, to be here. Jean started in April, so it's about three months, and we're very pleased to have her aboard. Jean, why don't you start with sharing a little bit about yourself and your background? Absolutely. From a human resource perspective, I've been in the business for just over 20 years uh, and really started within the banking industry. Uh, so a little more uh, financial background and, and so forth within that, within that industry. Uh, probably the most common denominator that I've seen throughout my human resources career is, is really guest service or customer service. So as I think back at my 17 years within banking, um, although human resources was a common thread, guest service certainly uh, really kind of drove you know, the focus of that. Uh, within that time, I traveled to several banking locations and certainly provided leadership and direction in terms of the human resources role, recruitment, hiring, performance appraisal processes, and, and that of nature. Uh, following my stint, certainly in banking, uh, which provided an excellent foundation within human resources, uh, I joined hospitality. So uh, went from a very serious uh, human resources role to a much more interactive, uh, um, I will say a little more fun Water environment. Water park type environment. Water park type environment. So with that being said, again, guest service, very important. So supported uh, about 12 department heads, I was the human resources director during my tenure there, just over seven years, and again, uh, supported uh, really the human resources function in terms of balancing the employee needs and the organizational needs and how legally all of that you know makes sense. Right. So that really sums up. And then about a year and a half or, or so ago, I joined the county just as a limited term employee to help create some policy and procedure handbook uh, uh, processes. So that was about a six month opportunity to join and understand county government a little bit better in terms of you know, really putting the human resources tool uh, in effect within uh, government. So had a little bit of experience there. And really gave you a leg up in the interview process. Not only did you bring excellent private sector experience, but you had a feel for the, how the county operates and some of the key players and staff and did a nice job with our, with our employee policy and procedures. Set the stage for our viewers a little bit. How many employees does Sheboygan County have? And, and then what is the budget of the uh, HR department, how many staff do you have? Okay, you bet. Currently we have approximately 830 employees, about 19 departments that comprise that number. Uh, and that number comes, uh, really fluctuates just a bit in terms of some summertime where it might go up a little bit and we need some summer uh, seasonal type help, but typically about 830. In terms of a budget, we have a, a human resources budget of approximately $468,000. Okay, and you have how many staff? Uh, currently four. Four staff. Uh, right. So four staff helping 830 so employees right. and a breadth of roles and responsibilities. What are the key responsibilities of a human resources department? Right. And that's ever changing every day. However, I like to explain it, Adam, from the standpoint of really our mission is to create an inclusive environment for our employees um, with excellent guest service and customer service to help balance the needs. Certainly human resources has to understand the business, if you will. So those 19 department heads that I referred to earlier, it's very key that we understand uh, an overview, if you will, of what those departments do so we can help be that strategic business partner at the table, help making decisions internally, if you will, for those key department head managers, supervisors, and then those employees. I like to describe human resources as kind of the life cycle of the employee. Uh, we do our best to, from the onset, recruit talented staff for Sheboygan County. Uh, once we have them recruited, we certainly onboard them and the entire hiring process, balancing the legal uh, ramifications certainly within those processes. And once we get them on board, it's our responsibility to help ensure that proper training, uh, really the policies, the procedures, the manuals, all of those important rules, if you will, that apply to Sheboygan County are communicated appropriately and in a timely basis. Uh, we ensure that safety is, is key to our employees uh, and that they're trained you know, 
as they're onboarded on those types of things. As you move through that life cycle of that employee, they're now onboarded, they're trained, they're enjoying their time at Sheboygan County, and we ensure them that anything from their payroll check in conjunction with the finance department and payroll, human resources helps make sure that because we want to pay employees correctly, that's important to them, that we participate in that process. The employee benefits is a huge section of which human resources plays a role making sure that our employees' employee benefits are working for them as well as balancing the county. Uh, professional training and development is critical and that's something that I'd really like to focus on in the coming year, uh, making sure that we are you know, professionally training you know, our management staff to move forward and, and prepare them for the future for Sheboygan County. And I know you also have some the more challenging roles with you know, it's fun to hire new people and help people improve and, and gain the skills they need to be successful, but from time to time you need to step in and, and help department heads or managers deal with discipline or, or sometimes letting people go, and, and that is obviously not a fun part of being a manager or an HR department, but an important role nonetheless. Right, it's probably more the serious side, certainly. Yeah. However, I view that as, as really coaching opportunities. We want everyone to succeed at Sheboygan County. Uh, so when the time comes, when there is that opportunity for improvement, if you will, we certainly do our best, engage our employees, and want to make it right. So we have a, an excellent, I believe, due process uh, policy, if you will, in our handbook that walks us through those tough times. And speaking of the handbook, I mean, you really got engaged with county government at an incredible time in the history of Wisconsin. Act 10, as I think most of our viewers are probably aware of or heard of, uh, created a lot of buzz at the state level, really changed how we interact and negotiate with our employees to, to a fair extent. Uh, set the stage for us a little bit. What, what is Act 10 and what were some of the significant changes that you came in and needed to address as both the employee uh, handbook as well as just now your day-to-day -day operations. Right, very good. Act 10, the Act 10 changes really the, the most significant piece that employers or Sheboygan County government had to really take a look at uh, hard was the changes relative to really eliminating the act and the changes really eliminated most of the collective bargaining right. you know opportunity for the majority of our employees. So it was very much of a, of a concern as we those changes came aboard for the county, uh, and the county took that very seriously. However, as we talk about the employee handbook and what that change meant, I believe that we took a very sensitive and respectful approach to those changes uh, for those groups of employees and had to do a very good job to balance what are those employees that are not in those collective bargaining units prior to Act 10 changes, and, and how do we bring these groups together? And I think the neat part of that was being part of that policy development uh, process last year, which really allowed me to gain the knowledge and really truly, again, the respect, that basic human kindness for each employee and understanding how they fit individually into those changes. And we were able to, I believe, put together an employee handbook that was, is positive, promotes employee engagement, open and honest communication, just as we had before, but we had to redefine that a little bit to ensure to those employees that were perhaps losing those collective bargaining rights that we are an employer of choice, we care, and we will engage and respect and have an open door policy for their, their opinions. And speaking of open door, I know that personally, Chairman Destrudy and I wanted to make sure that as this policy, as these new policies were prepared, as this HR uh, manual was developed that we allowed for a lot of input from our staff. What was that process? Because from time to time you'll hear about a local unit of government creating a new HR manual and they may be criticized because the employees didn't have any opportunity for input, but I know we did just the opposite here. Right. Uh, again, being part of that process from almost the onset, it was so enlightening to me uh, because I have never been part of such an engaging process from the employee standpoint. At first I was like, wow, this is, this is interesting, but really what a learning experience, I believe for all of us as we stepped through that. Uh, we had a number of policies and from the beginning uh, split those policies into three sections. Uh, what we did from there, Adam, is we uh, identified key players, a diverse group of, of employees who could sit in those three different groups to really uh, 
peel the onion, if you will, in each of those policies. What's working? What's not? How can we add better value? In light of the potential changes coming with Act 10, how can we get uh, really an employee handbook that is I inclusive? So we really did a nice job at getting at the table, having great open discussions, putting together drafts of those policies, and from there, the drafts were put together. They were put on our intranet, the Sheboygan County intranet site, for all employees to view. So if they were not part of that meeting and that committee, if you will, for the, that set of policies, they could add value. They could comment on the intranet. They could email human resources. Uh, and then in conjunction with that, as we continued to take their concerns and advice, we then continue to fine tune those policies and those drafts and the really neat part again and I was a little hesitant but it worked very well was that we went to then employee uh, open forum meetings and we said all right everyone invited come on in and we reviewed policy by policy line item by line item and continued to to the very end uh, seek out additional you know concerns adding value whatever the employees wanted to to voice uh, we were open to. So that as an end result, I believe, created a very fine uh, handbook that spoke to the issue of truly engaging our employees. You know, I, I think you and the others involved handled it very well. Uh, our employees have been complimentary of the opportunities for input. It certainly was a balance, however. I mean, it wasn't just what the employees wanted, clearly. It was organizationally, how do we position ourselves for success this year and going forward and fiscally there were some changes made that for some employees were difficult to swallow but but overall I think it was a balance and one that is serving us well we'll continue to make refinements as we move forward. I'm going to transition to Roger because of course Chairman Testrudi knows that another key initiative for the county was our in-health clinic. So Roger I'll turn it over to you. Yes thank you Adam and good to have you with us Gene and um, Looking uh, forward to you uh, working many years with the county. Uh, when did the county establish the in-health clinic and why? Would you explain some of that? Absolutely. The in-health clinic was established in 2008. Uh, and really, as, as we look back and put some history together about the whys of that, Roger, it really comes down to, again, what's best for the employee as we talk about the human resources role and understanding you know, why a number of our employees are working is because certainly uh, we need to take a look at their, their health benefits and what, what can we provide. Uh, so as we looked at both um, balancing what's best for the employee, what's best for the county, what's best for the taxpayer, we realized that our costs were quite high. And how do we take a look and control those costs in a more efficient manner? So we were able to, to develop this, this uh, really in-house clinic, if you will, through Intera Health. And uh, basically what that does for the employees and, and for the employer and taxpayers is really a common thread, and that is to say, lower, because we're such a large organization, lower health care costs in general. We were able to uh, provide primary health care to our employees at a much more effective and efficient cost for the employee. So very low out-of-pocket cost for the employee, which in turn then for the taxpayer, um, as we focus the clinic on wellness and coaching and controlling any disease management issues really minimizes, hopefully minimizes, more longer term care issues and concerns which relate to dollars. So hopefully we're minimizing uh, future health care you know, costs and risks mm -hmm. with the clinic. And uh, as you know, the city of Sheboygan and the Sheboygan School District have joined us and uh, we're glad to see that, that uh, helps pay the operating costs and reduce the uh, cost for the taxpayers of all those entities. Would you explain how that's been working? Absolutely. We are excited to have both the uh, City of Sheboygan and the Sheboygan Area School District join our clinic. It does a number of things for us, certainly. It encourages and, and fosters great employee relations uh, with, you know, uh, certainly employees across the board with those three entities. However, it also, from a community standpoint, is certainly the right thing to do, uh, you know, as, as we work with our partners. Uh, we were able to, again, maximize additional savings as they came on board uh, because we were able to share, as you mentioned, really equipment costs, our overhead costs in general were now shared by three entities instead of just Sheboygan County as a whole uh, carrying that, uh, that uh, weight, if you will. So not only from a, a 
a uh, right thing to do in, in the community perspective, as well as really the taxpayers on a whole, and allowing those two groups in and their, those employees to start certainly enjoying the benefits of lower cost, uh, you know, health benefits, uh, and so forth. Now, the uh, federal health care reform is a big challenge also. How is uh, Sheboygan County reacting to that, and what are we doing to prepare? Right. Federal health care reform and the Health Care Reform Act, Affordable Care Act, certainly has employers, and in particular Sheboygan County, taking a look at uh, how we provide affordable health care to the majority of our employees. So we're responding to that, certainly understanding a number of changes still yet to come this year that we don't have specifics on. Uh, we are working with our benefit consultants, certainly, and understanding where our plan is today, what are the costs associated with what today is, trying to understand, certainly, and we'll have a better understanding and handle on that in the next couple of months in terms of cost going into 2014 and beyond. Uh, however, we continue now to take a look at our plan design for 2014, what the costs are associated with that, but also balancing the cost to the county with the needs of the employees and retirees at this point in time. So really uh, in the middle of balancing what's the right thing to do and what's you know for the employee and the taxpayer at the same time. And uh, I, uh, there's always a concern how much are, are the employees paying toward their insurance and how much is the county paying. Would you explain that to our viewers? Right. Overall, we have a couple of different plans because we still do have two collective bargaining units active. We have about 237 employees out of our 830 that still remain within the collective bargaining uh, unions, if you will. So that, in answer to your question, we've got a couple of different percentages that employees do pay toward health care. Uh, on the average, though, Roger, we are we have our the majority of our employees paying between 15 and 17 and a half percent of that health care cost, with the county picking up the, the balance. And we're fortunate to have a very good uh, safety record in the county from all the different departments. But uh, uh, how are are we trying to uh, strive to improve and uh, and uh, do things better if possible? Very good. Safety is, is a number one priority, and I was encouraged as I came on board to see uh, really that we do have uh, very good safety controls in place and very minimal claims, if you will, on both the employee and the guest you know, from those perspectives. However, there's always opportunity to uh, improve and enhance those processes. What we've done since my arrival is we've kind of picked up that safety initiative. We now have put together a safety committee who meets once a month. It is comprised of a member of all 19 of our main departments and really a diverse group of employees, managers, supervisors, and department heads on that committee. We uh, take safety very seriously here at Sheboygan County from a few perspectives. One, from the employee's perspective, we certainly want to offer a, a work environment that is safe for our employees to come to. So whether that has to do certainly with the chemicals they might handle uh, and on the job tools, if you will, lockout, takeout on equipments and so forth, we're focusing on those types of efforts. We're also focusing certainly on um, those, how do I say, uh, natural disaster type safety, so tornado warnings, fire drills, things of that nature. We need to have Sheboygan County prepared in the event we have the unexpected happen. So we're focusing on those policies, those procedures, uh, those manuals are being put into place as we speak, and furthermore, we'll continue to develop really from a broader perspective contingency action plans. In the event we do have a more major disaster, Will Sheboygan County be ready? Yes, we will. So really in a nutshell, the, the committee continues to meet. We have a, a target date of September 1st to have those policies, as I mentioned, uh, among others, put together in our department head's hands. Uh, we will have our management uh, group trained in September. And then we'll roll out the first ever all-employee annual safety training uh, required for all of our employees so we can educate and be ready in the event of any safety concerns. Very good. Thank you, Gene. Nice overview, and I've really appreciated Gene's leadership on this, as well as Steve Steinert, our emergency management director. The two of them have been co-chairing this effort the last few months, and it's very important to the su success of our organization. And, it, and it's not only, you know, as you said, those natural disasters. I think most people think well, a tornado drill or fire drill or, right. you know, working with chemicals or what have you, but 
We live in a day and age where, unfortunately, we have to be more concerned with a bomb threat or someone calling and, and making that prank call or threat that there's a bomb or someone in the building with a gun. Um, we, we, we've had situations, and people certainly have seen this on the news, where you might receive a letter or, an, or a package in the mail that may have anthrax, or at least we could, we, it could possibly have something in it. These are just different threats that we read about in the paper, or see on the news that it seems to always happen in that other community or that bigger city, but it could happen here. And obviously, we want our staff prepared to, you know, how do you respond to that if you pick up the phone that day and you're being threatened or your building is being threatened? How do you respond when you, when you get that piece of mail that looks dangerous? And again, it's something that I wish we didn't have to spend time and resources on, but it's very important that we do so. So I really appreciate your work and the committee's work. Um, you mentioned earlier professional development, and I think it goes without saying in our organization that we're always strive, striving to improve. I mean, continuous improvement is part of our philosophy, but it doesn't just happen. You know, we need to we need to work at that. We need to give employees the skill sets they need to improve. So, Gene, you've really brought in some, you know fresh ideas and some juice behind. We've got to enhance our professional development opportunities. What do you have in mind? Professional development happens to be my passion, so <laughs> I kind of light up when you talk about that, Adam. I believe, again, when we look at the future of whether that's human resources or Sheboygan County as a whole, we need to be ready. We need to be ready for the future, whether that means education, uh, tools that we might provide. We have our employees who are out hopefully you know, learning and, and on the job and preparing themselves for the future. We need to help that effort uh, along the lines of what I said earlier in terms of human resource management and how we need to set a stage legally for Sheboygan County to be successful. We need to train our managers and our leaders about what to do, what not to do what is okay and what are those parameters. So I'm excited to be able to offer as we move forward uh, more interviewing, hiring, um, employee relations management, leadership, guidance. Uh, we have great leaders as our department heads, but we need to look forward and develop. We are looking forward to perhaps putting in place a succession planning um, process within Sheboygan County. What does that mean? We wanna make sure that we know who the next are we grooming someone internally to be the next HR director and the next planning director and so forth? Do we have people internally with those skill sets? If not, perhaps we should look at how we can get those skill sets. So again, long term, really looking out for the taxpayer, Sheboygan County's bottom line to promote from within, to encourage, to educate our staff in-house, if you will, at a very minimal cost. We want the best and the brightest. We want to be able to to attract good employees and when they're here we want to be able to retain them and obviously that equates to providing the best service we can to, to the community. Um, you've focused more on professional development, we're going to provide those opportunities, but of course compensation is important in order to attract and retain right. good employees as well. And to the county board's credit and to the HR department's credit, we have had some checks and balances over the years to you know, make sure we're competitive with other counties. But this year we're going through a, a comprehensive compensation study. What's in play there? Very good. We are working with, uh, with a consultant um, as we take a look at the importance of where are our salary ranges, number one. Are we competitively priced, number one, with our surrounding counties in the job market, but also taking a look at both public and private sector? What does that mean? We have to be competitive as you talk about recruitment, attraction, and retention of those employees. Uh, and so what we're doing, the process that we're uh, hoping to really have an end result and, and, and get to is taking a look at job descriptions, making sure that our job descriptions are up to date, accurate, and, and completely define the roles and responsibilities of positions. M marrying that then, Adam, with our study that we're doing through our consultant, we're actually taking a look at comparables. So we're going out and we're saying, all right, other counties, what are you paying for like jobs? Private sector, what are you paying for like jobs? At the end result, we're, we will present a salary and a pay structure that really is 
in, in the year, if you will, uh, very up to date and will speak to the competitiveness of our ranges. As we look at that process and our goal is by the end of the year to have those ranges in place, the job descriptions in place, and then we were able to really tie that to performance. And hopefully we're looking at what we call a paper performance plan, which is really rewarding, recognizing those employees who are our top performers uh, who are really doing an excellent job for Sheboygan County and we will tie then those pay ranges, those job descriptions and that performance appraisal process together hopefully by, by this time next year. Because we know overall our, you know, our grades are probably in pretty good shape and obviously 830 employees, that's a lot of position descriptions. Most of them are probably fine but over time adjustments do need to be made. But we also know we have some areas of, of concern and compression in the Sheriff's Department or you know, where an employee is supervising someone that may be making as much or more because of overtime, what have you. So those tweaks are ongoing and it's a credit again to the county board for encouraging this consultant to come in and, and give us that snapshot so we can improve the competitive nature of our county. We don't want to be average. We want to be the best and we're striving to get there. Last question. Uh, if someone has an interest in working for Sheboygan County, how do they get more information? What can they do to learn what positions are open? Very good. We have a number of ways. Uh, primarily, uh, really, the number one means of communication is our website, Sheboygan County website, SheboyganCounty.com. And basically, you can go on and you will see in the day uh, what is available. You'll see a job description. You'll have an idea of really the scope and dimension of what's expected, what's required, and so forth. So I encourage anyone to go on our website and take a look at that. If you don't have access to a computer, you can certainly give our Human Resources Department a phone call. We'd be happy to walk through that with them, as well as our local job service. If you're down and using that resource, it's an excellent resource and, again, provides great information on the employment opportunities Sheboygan County has to offer. Outstanding. Well, not bad for a 30-minute presentation. You got a <laughs> wonderful overview of HR, roles, responsibilities, and as you can see, incredible breadth of responsibility for Jean and her staff. Thank you for joining us today. Wonderful overview. If you have more questions or, as Jean said, are not able to get on the website and have some interest in learning more about what may open or available in the county at our HR department or at the Job Center, please don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you for your good work the past few months. As Roger said, I'm hoping that we've got a, we're going to have you around for a long time, Gene. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Next month, again, we're going to have another uh, important department head come in and talk about roles and responsibilities and switching gears a little bit. We haven't had our coroner here for quite some time and coroner David Lafine, who's been our coroner in the county for years, years and years, and provides, of course, a very important service, is going to be here to talk about his roles and responsibilities. And I generally don't see the coroner very often. It's always <laughs> the budget process when I see Dave, and sometimes that feels just about right for me, but he's always interesting. So please join us next month. And until then, have a good summer. Thanks for joining us.